I guess I'm just totally fed up with Obama, and I'm powerless. You know, it's you can't make him do anything. He's not doing his job. You know, the, the, the Ebola thing was the same exact thing. He, he just got damn lucky. You know, there were he, he did get lucky that it didn't spread, and you're right, he's not doing his job. He he still thinks he's at Harvard, and he's a college professor, and he's lecturing the nation today on the phantom outburst of Islamophobia, which doesn't exist. You know, they say dissent is good, Dave, but when, with liberals, when you dissent against something that they like, oh, no, all of a sudden dissent is not good. If I want to look at radical Islam for the cancer it is, on the United States and the rest of the world, I will. And I think however many Americans there are now, 320 million, give or take, if they want to use their freedom of speech and freedom of religion to, in their own minds, condemn a religion that is behind 99.9% .9 of all of the terrorism in the world, we can, because it's the truth. If our illustrious president does not want to acknowledge radical Islam, well, that's his problem, because it's going to be part of his legacy, and he just looks like a fool, Dave. Yeah. All right, don't be frustrated. You do have power, though. It's called voting. It's called voting. Don't don't sell yourself short, and don't be your own worst critic, and don't be dejected. Look at Donald Trump, okay? You can vote for him, and that's a vote against that. It's a vote for what I think would be a great president and a vote against Hillary, which would be a disaster, which would almost make Obama look good. So don't, don't say you don't have power. Don't underestimate the power of voting. People have died for our right to vote, and never sell yourself short. I know it's frustrating. But look, you just called up uh, one of the top uh, talk show hosts, uh, excuse me, one of the top talk shows in the nation, and your voice was heard. And maybe it'll inspire other people. But go check out michaelsavage.com, and you'll see where he calls for people from Zika-infested nations not to be allowed into the United States. Uh, Tom in San Francisco, Line 8, KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, thank you. You know... Um Obama had a chance, an opportunity at that talk at the mosque to uh, lecture the uh, imams on the dangers and the horrible aspects of Sharia law and ask them for their support in helping to report people they're suspicious of. He doesn't touch that subject because I think to him he has so much anger toward us that the most dangerous people in the world to him are the backbone of America, the conservatives of America. They're the, we, we are worse. That, I mean, the fact that he would sit down, he talked about fringe groups, but he sits down with fringe countries like Iran, and uh, you can't say anything more than, you know, him and, and Kerry can't. Oh, that horrible deal, Tom, that, that horrible embarrassment of a Secretary of State, John Kerry, making that embarrassing deal that funds terrorism to the number one state sponsor of terrorism in, in, in Iran. Uh, it, it is truly amazing. But here, here's the deal, Tom. Here's what nobody want, in the press wants to talk about. Obama was raised white. Okay? Obama has benefited from what liberals call white privilege. Obama, although he may look darker in tone, is white. Okay? He was raised by his white grandparents in Kansas, the whitey white state of Kansas. He was raised by his white grandparents, again, uh, in Hawaii, back and forth in later years. He was educated white. He speaks white. His whole background, the foundation of his whole existence is white, Tom. He's whiter than you and me put together. And he, he goes, he's always on the wrong side of race issues. He's always on the wrong side of the terrorist. Well, he can't be on the wrong side of the terrorist issue because he refuses to acknowledge it. Imagine, Tom, you, you got to make things personal with people. Imagine what Sharia law would do to Obama's daughters. You think he'd like that? You know, I, I think the problem is if you look at his being raised partly in Indonesia, um, you look at how he was raised with, uh, you know, the, the, the husband, the father that skipped out and the mother that hippy dippy. A lot of his uh, characteristics of his childhood, unfortunately, uh, are shared by some of the most con the, the major tyrants of our history. Um, and um, as Dr. Savage says, look at his eyes. It's amazing that our country has had the constraints to prevent what he said. And he's admitted in the past that democracy, he wishes democracy is a problem for him. He wishes he could just wave a wand more. He tries as much as he could, but I. I think we don't understand. I think Dr. Savage understands the pathology of this man's mind is beyond the comprehension of most Americans.
I agree. I agree. Well said, Tom. Thank you. From uh, San Francisco and our affiliate there, Dr. Savage's affiliate, KSFO. Um, oh, got a few minutes left. Let's get uh, from the the home state of Rand Paul, who dropped out of the race today. Line two, Robert on WVLK. Welcome to the Savage Nation. How are you? Doing great, sir. How about yourself? I am doing fine. Uh, thanks for taking the time. Rand Paul's gone. How's it, how's it resonating at home? <laughs> well, uh, he's got a formidable candidate, I guess, was uh, Mayor Gray, but uh, I think he'll... I think he'll succeed. I think he does great things for the, for the state, and I uh, really like the guy. So I wouldn't have voted for him, but uh, I like a lot of what he stands up for. I'm a Trump guy. and uh, Okay, listen, Robert, one second. That's fair. I think that's fair, and that's classy of you, is that, okay, you like Rand Paul for what he does in, in your home state of Kentucky, where you're listening on WVLK, but you wouldn't vote for him for president. Say, some people are good at some jobs, but not well-suited for other jobs. I think that's fair. Just, I don't think he'd ever get elected. I just, uh, even though I share most of his views, I, I, I'm just a Trump guy. I think everybody's just fed up with it. And I'm seeing it more and more. People I'm talking to are saying it more and more. But uh, some people are disenfranchised because if you're really up to speed on voting and you really understand the process, a lot of people I'm talking to are saying, hey, why should I vote the way the electorate's set up? Uh, you know, my vote doesn't count. And... I think, you know, people like yourself, Dr. Savage, we've just got to keep boosting people up. Your vote does matter. It does count. It sends a message. Uh, you know, I wish I could kick them all out on their ear because there's not many of them, you know, Rand Paul being one of the good ones, but... Gosh, it just seems like the bulk of them are just garbage. I mean, it just... They are. Well, and, and you know, if... You heard the dejection in the previous caller's voice. You know he feels powerless. There's a lot of people out there, but you can't su- you can't succumb to that. I mean, uh, you know, the media is not going to report. Look at the black community in America. Look at all of urban areas. Black unemployment is higher than than unemployment for everybody. That's not because of white privilege. It's because Obama's economy is horrible. Um, blacks are worse off in every category since Obama came into office. He has not done anything for them and and being that i'm a radio geek robert i can tell you that for the 2008 campaign obama did not send spend one cent on black radio why he didn't have to he got 98 percent of the vote so that kind of to me epitomizes what was to come for the black community from this so quote unquote historic first black president who happens to be biracial what it comes down to is i'm not buying radio from you for my campaign I'm not going to help you. Black unemployment is up. Um, The black murder rate is up. The uh, unwed mothers having babies in the black community is up. Deaths from drugs, up, up, up. Every negative category in the black community is up under Obama. Is that my fault, Robert? Is that your fault? It's his fault. No, that's exactly right. I'll tell you from a a perspective of a small business owner, I started a small uh, machining manufacturing shop. And with Obamacare, it wiped out our insurance. I lost a lot of good employees because I couldn't compete with the bigger factories. It, it just crushed us. I mean, it, it, it's just we feel like we're fighting uphill the whole time. Hey, one, we two, two. The government just doesn't have our back. Just, two quick things, Robert. Two quick things. One, Rand Paul wouldn't never get elected because I, I like some of the things he says, but he's just not likable, and it is a popularity contest. The second thing, uh, Republicans on the Hill. That uh, stupid that they are, tried to repeal Obamacare again. You just mentioned it with your small business. I'm sorry about that. The 17, folks, seven, and Robert, 17 million people have signed up for Obamacare. That's Obama administration's numbers. Of those 17 million people, approximately half of them are people who had insurance and doctors that they wanted to keep that were kicked off the rolls because of Obamacare. That leaves us with about 8 or 9 million people who have signed up for Obamacare that were previously without health care insurance. We were sold a bill of goods that 52 million people would come in droves because they didn't have health insurance. Where are they? Where are they? Where you know, where forty-three million people who didn't have health care are missing? 
it, it was all a fraud. It was all a scam. Now the insurance companies are double dipping. But, Robert, I, I hope your business can come back. I, I'm sorry you're going through that. Uh, but a lot of people, unfortunately, are in your shoes. I'm, I'm kind of in it. <laughs> I'm kind of in it, uh, in, in a sense. But I do appreciate your call. We'll take a quick break. Lou Pate here with you on the home of Diseases Without Borders, the Savage Nation. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. Lou Pate sitting in for Dr. Savage. He will return tomorrow, and it is a show you will not want to meet. As mentioned earlier, the Zika virus has caused Governor Rick Scott in Florida to declare, to declare a health emergency in four counties. As you know, I'm, I'm here in Florida. I'm in Delray Beach. We, we have our mosquitoes. They'll, they'll carry a car away. But it is being passed sexually, as in Dallas, and it is being passed through mosquitoes, causing the governor to cause a um, declare a health emergency. That is just the beginning. On tomorrow's show, Dr. Savage is going to be talking a lot about the Zika virus and going to be talking about his book, which you should check out on michaelsavage.com, Diseases Without Borders, Boosting Your Immunity Against Infectious Diseases from the Flu and Measles to Tuberculosis. And again, Dr. Savage has his Ph.D. in epidemiology and nutrition from the University of California at Berkeley. Um, Because when it hits and everybody's panicking, then it's too late. Um, The nation is going down the toilet fast. Dateline, Washington, D.C. The nuts in Washington. Remember, they had Marion Barry was their mayor. He went to jail because he was videotaped doing drugs in the presence of a prostitute. And then he came out and they re-elected him. They made him not the mayor, but he went to the city council. Well, the D.C. city council has voted unanimously to approve a bill that includes a proposal to pay residents a stipend not to commit crimes. It's uh, modeled after a uh, uh, program in Richmond, California, that advocates, that says that that has contributed, uh, they say, to deep reductions in crime. I don't believe it. Get this. You think we're not going down the toilet quick? Under the bill, city officials would identify up to 200 people a year who are considered at risk of either committing or becoming victims of violent crime. And these people would be directed to participate in behavioral therapy and other programs if they fulfill those obligations and stay out of trouble. They would be paid. How nuts is this country going under Obama? Vote Trump. Donald Trump is back. My name is Lou Pate. I do appreciate um, the uh, honor of the doctor allowing me to sit in for him today. Thank you to Robert. Thank you for Jim. Couldn't have done it without you guys. Great job. Check in with Dr. Savage tomorrow. Diseases Without Borders and the Zika virus here on the Savage Nation. Have a great night, everybody. Savage. 